Theologia Germanica, translated from the German by Susanna Winkworth in 1857. Chapter 7 Of the Eyes of the Spirit, wherewith man looketh into eternity and into time, and how the one is hindered of the other in its working. Let us remember how it is written and said that the soul of Christ had two eyes, a right and a left eye. In the beginning, when the soul of Christ was created, she fixed her right eye upon eternity and the Godhead, and remained in the full intuition and enjoyment of the divine essence and eternal perfection, and continued thus unmoved and undisturbed by all the accidents and travail, suffering torment and pain that ever befell the outward man but with the left eye she beheld the creature and perceived all things therein and took note of the difference between the creatures which were better or worse nobler or meaner and thereafter was the outward man of christ ordered thus the inner man of christ according to the right eye of his soul stood in the full exercise of his divine nature in perfect blessedness joy and eternal peace but the outward man and the left eye of Christ's soul stood with him in perfect suffering, in all tribulation, affliction, and travail, and this in such sort that the inward and right eye remained unmoved, unhindered, and untouched by all the travail, suffering, grief, and anguish that ever befell the outward man. It hath been said that when Christ was bound to the pillar and scourged, and when he hung upon the cross according to the outward man yet his inner man or soul according to the right eye stood in as full possession of divine joy and blessedness as it did after his ascension or as it doth now in like manner his outward man or soul with the left eye was never hindered disturbed or troubled by the inward eye in its contemplation of the outward things that belong to it now the created soul of man hath also two eyes the one is the power of seeing into eternity the other of seeing into time in the creatures of perceiving how they differ from each other as aforesaid of giving life and needful things to the body and ordering and governing it for the best but these two eyes of the soul of man cannot both perform their work at once but if the soul shall see with the right eye into eternity then the left eye must close itself and refrain from working and be as though it were dead for if the left eye be fulfilling its office toward outward things that is holding converse with time and the creatures then must the right eye be hindered in its working that is in its contemplation therefore whosoever will have the one must let the other go for no man can serve two masters end of theologica germanica chapter seven translated from the german by susanna winkworth in eighteen fifty seven